because uh, this is the first time I'm uh, interacting with you. Uh, I'm a much more conventional diplomat. I do my job rather than uh, add to the fire and fury uh, of uh, heightening tensions. So I just came here because for the first time, uh, after the end of uh, uh, the Security Council closed consultations, uh, we noted that two states who made national statements tried to pass them off as the will of the international community. But you're all uh, nuanced and well-versed in what and how the Security Council acts. And I therefore do not need to tell you that the Security Council is a very deliberative organization, uh, institution. It works in a very considered manner. Its outcomes are provided to all of us through the President. So if national statements try to masquerade as the will of the international community, I thought I will come across to you too and explain our national position. And what is that? Our national position was and remains that matters related to Article 370 of the Indian Constitution are entirely an internal matter of India. These have no external ramifications. The recent decisions taken by the government of India and our legislative bodies are intended to ensure that good governance is promoted, socioeconomic development is enhanced for our people in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. You are aware this morning that the Chief Secretary of the State of, of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir announced a whole set of measures that the government is undertaking to move towards normalcy. We are gratified that the Security Council in its close consultations <coughs> appreciated these efforts, acknowledged them, and indicated that this is the direction in which they would like the international community to move. We are committed to gradually restri uh, removing all restrictions. You are aware of the timetable for that. Let me also tell you, since the changes internal to India have not made any difference to our external orientation, India remains committed to ensure that the that the situation there remains calm and peaceful. We are committed to all the agreements that we have signed on this issue. We note that there were some who tried to project an alarmist approach to the situation, which is far from the ground realities. Of particular concern, is that one state is using terminology of jihad against and promoting violence in India, including by their leaders? Friends, violence is no solution to the problems that all of us face. We are committed to and, are, and inconsistent with our previous position that all issues between India and Pakistan as well as India and any other country, will be resolved bilaterally, peacefully, and in a manner that behoves normal interstate relations between uh, countries. We are saddened that terrorism is being uh, fueled, language and incendiary talk of jihad is being uh, mentioned by people who should know better. All of you our understanding of the situation here. I do not need to tell you what was the outcome of the close consultations. You will yourself know about it. We stand ready to continue our efforts towards 
peaceful resolution of all issues in an atmosphere free of terror and violence. And I'm ready, if any of you are willing to ask any questions, I will take. I understand there are many of you. This is my first time, so I said, please cut me slack. Mr. And Mr. I, Mr. Yes, I will. Don't worry. I will. Please, I'll start with you. you. And just relax. I will start with you, and I will answer five questions, which is three, five times more than both my predecessors who came here answered. Let's start you, since you are so excited. No, I'm not excited. The only thing is the history is excited. There has been resolution on that disputed territory uh, of Kashmir and Article 370, fine. That could be an internal matter of you. Thank you for accepting that. No. Thank you for accepting that. That All could right, be an internal All right. Thank you. So, so Article 370 was enshrined in the in Indian where? Constitution. Thank you. By right. India. Right. But the Thank thing you. is, still the reality remains that the, what, what, how do you deal with the UN Security Council resolutions passed in 1947, 50, and then Shimla Agreement has also failed in bilateralism. Thank you. Thank you. I understand your point. Your point is how do we address this issue? Uh, the history is well known. I don't need to go back. Let us look at the last agreement that India and Pakistan signed. And that goes back to 1972. We are committed to that, and we hope Pakistan too is to try to address these issues in the manner that they have signed on to in a legally binding agreement, and uh, we stand ready to address them in that context. Uh, we can go back in history, but every new agreement overtakes the past. So you are very well versed, my friend. Uh, please appreciate that I started by saying we are committed to that agreement. Uh, and we hope Pakistan too is. Uh, because if that is so, its action don't seem to be working out with what is in that agreement. Thank you. Yes, sir, I'll answer you, yes, please. Ambassador. I will answer all my friends from Thank the you, South Asian Ambassador. continent. Thank you. Number two. OK, Ambassador. The fact remains, while you have said all these things that you're willing to talk and you're ready to talk, but what has happened? The fact remains, India has steadfastly refused to have any meeting with Pakistan for one reason or another. It has been almost time immemorial. When are you going to sit down with Pakistan and have a meeting? Because, you know, and that's the reality. Thank you. Without Can I meeting, answer? Yes, sir. Can okay. I answer the question? Is Let's yes. be specific about questions. If your question is whether India and Pakistan have talked, let me tell you, I have been a member of many delegations to Islamabad. You are aware of that. I myself served as an Indian diplomat in Islamabad. So please understand, there are normal diplomatic ways of dealing with uh, countries when countries deal with each other. That's the way to do it. But using terror to try uh, and push uh, your goals is not the way that normal states behave in. No democracy will acknowledge or accept talks when terror thrives. Stop terror to start talks. We yes, sir. No sir. Yes, sir. You yes, wanted sir. me? Yes, sir. And so that you will not have any doubts that I've answered three Pakistani questions. Third. I, yes. You, when will you begin a dialogue with Pakistan. So let me begin by coming across to you <laughs> okay. and shaking your hands. <laughs> yes, sir. All three of you. So let me tell you, we've already extended our hand of friendship by saying we are committed to similar agreement. Let us wait for a response on that from the Pakistani side. Now I go to you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I will. Gender neutral. Uh, I will be gender neutral. Ambassador, thank yes. you. Amanda Price from Al Jazeera English. Yes, ma'am. Question for you. Um, how do you respond to Pakistan's assertion that the very fact that we're having a meeting here at the Security Council means this is no longer a bilateral issue? This has been internationalized. Ma'am, you've been covering the Security Council. You are aware that in close consultations, anyone, especially parties to the dispute, can try and throw in anything for the consideration of the members of the Security Council. That's the nature of the beast. However, I've, you have seen 
what's the outcome of that meeting. There is, uh, I don't want to add further, I've repeatedly said, we are ready to address these issues in a manner that states who have normal approaches to international ties should uh, address them. Uh, and in our case, we are committed to the Simla Agreement. It's now for Pakistan to make that commitment to stop terror, to start talks. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Ladies, yes. Yoshita. Thank you, Ambassador. After four questions, so that nobody thinks that I am being biased towards you. Yes, ma'am. Um, just before the meeting, Russia said that it favors a bilateral track between India and Pakistan on Kashmir. That's again a viewpoint of many other countries here at the UN. So uh, again, uh, in a way that Pakistan that's say it said that uh, it's internationalizing the issue, but with other countries not in favor of that, uh, how do you see uh, uh, this uh, given the fact that other countries are saying it's a bilateral issue? Yeah. I do not like my predecessors take on the responsibility of speaking for the council. The Council has spoken. It's pretty clear. All of you are aware of what uh, outcomes are there. I will not comment on it. Uh, let me tell you, India's commitment to uh, address these issues on the bilateral track has very broad acceptance globally. Anyone else? Uh, yes, just Thank one you. minute. Thank yes. you, Ambassador. Yes. You, you always uh, had a complaint that I never spoke with you. Yes. I'm ready now. Yeah. And, and this is the fifth, but I will give you one sixth. Mr. And Ambassador, you spoke about normalization and uh, removing uh, the restrictions in Kashmir. Uh, so are you here admitting that there is something wrong that happened? Uh, one second. One how question India, at a time. I never answer more than India, one. How India is going to address right. the, will, the will of the Kashmiri people. Sure. Thank you. So let me tell you, there is something called prevention is better than cure. Uh, you, what we, uh, the measures that we took were preventive in nature. Uh, they were designed to stop terrorists from bleeding our people. You've noticed that in the 10 days that have passed, there are no casualties. There are no fatal, 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 fatalities. fatalities. Uh, that's because every effort was made to work uh, to ensure that our people in Jammu and Kashmir are not adversely affected in terms of their lives. Yes, there's always a difficulty that sometimes these will lead to restrictions. We acknowledge that. We are an open society. We acknowledge that. But it's a balance of choice that the administrators on the ground should make, not journalists here or diplomats here. Uh, please allow them the space and time to address these issues. Uh, they have controlled the situation. You have seen there's not one fatality. In similar situations uh, in large parts of the world, including previously in Jammu and Kashmir, there have been large fatalities if such an uh, uh, issue arises. So please give us some time. We are addressing it in a democratic manner, in a manner that uh, we are committed to, to address uh, difficulties that our people in Jammu and Kashmir are facing. So last question, ma'am. You talked about Pakistan promoting extremist elements in the region. What do you have to say about the uh, international organization accusing Indian uh, troops and soldiers committing human rights violation in Indian administrated Kashmir? I don't know what you're talking of, international organization. The UN didn't say anything. I don't go by, pardon, uh, well, madam, uh, yes, let's go one by one. Let's go. Please, please, I will answer. Right. Um, there is nobody, nobody, which is intergovernmental in nature, which has accused India of anything that you're saying, anything. Uh, uh, please, let me explain. Let me explain. You've asked your question. Please cut me that slack. Give me that slack. I'm new to this game. Please understand that. So, no intergovernmental organization in the world has ever said anything about Indian democracy, India's commitment to human rights. We are the country who started issues of apartheid at the UN. None of you who are talking about this were even worried about that. 
don't forget, India was the country which changed the charter uh, of the uh, Human Rights Declaration yes, from... Ex please, 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 it's fair. You had your chance. Allow me to speak. Uh, we are not in a debate. We are in a question and answer modality. So, we are the country which changed the word all men are born equal in the Human Rights Charter to all humans are born equal, signifying men and women are equal. So please, our constitution is an open book. Our, our legislature is an open book. Put on the TV, you will see we have different shades of opinion in India. There will be issues discussed. And if there are issues, these will be addressed by our courts. We don't need international busybodies to uh, try and tell us how to run our lives. We are a billion plus people. We know how to uh, do. And a commitment to democracy, unlike those who are now trying to speak to me, have no, uh, uh, whose experience is extremely limited. We have vast experience. We will fulfill our goals. We are committed to addressing uh, the difficulties some of our people have. And please give us the time and space to address these. Thank you very much. Don't these restrictions undermine India's image as democracy, as an open democracy? Usually I wouldn't have answered because, as I said, you, none of you answered a question. People who came here and just walked off as, an, as a representative of an open democracy, I am ready to answer. Please, 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 let me answer this. Speaking about India's track record and these new restrictions, don't they undermine that image of being an open democracy? So, public order is integral to ensuring that democracy prospers. Uh, without public order, uh, no democracy can function. So there are reasonable restrictions. We acknowledge that these are restrictions. We are easing them. Again, let us not here decide uh, what and to what extent and how fast this is done. There is a pace, there is a trajectory. The trajectory is clear. You may not be happy with the pace. Some others may be unhappy with the pace. But it's the people on the ground, the administrators who are committed, who work under democratically elected leaders who will decide this. And let me assure you, India is a vibrant, thriving democracy and we live by it every day. Thank you very much.